I think the most important thing to know about living in the 21st century is that humans are now hackable animals. To, to hack a human being means to understand that human better than he or she understand themselves, which was never possible in history before on a massive scale. If there is a big speech by the big leader on the radio, everybody must listen. You can smile and you can clap your hands, but they know that you're actually angry. This is a kind of power that nobody in history ever had. And this is not science fiction. It's not a thousand years in the future. Some regimes are already starting to build these total surveillance systems, even now. Shalom, one and all. Greetings in the name of our Messiah, Christ Jesus. You're watching Breaking Babylon right here on NIUC TV. Guys, if you do not believe in the fake science that says humans are the primary reason for environmental degradation, and you don't believe that gender is fluid, well, you may not qualify for the world economic agenda, but you do qualify in watching Breaking Babylon. I'm sitting here with John Pounders right now. I'm looking forward to talking about this DevOps stuff. Yeah, man. What's up, guys? It's so good to be here uh, again. This, you know, this intro we played there, listening to uh, this guy's interview on CNN. Um, you know, we've talked about this for a while and what they've been telling us is coming, and and we're finally here to this to this state to where they say humans are hackable and to where they can have absolute control. And so we're going to be talking about that tonight, amongst of few other topics as well that have to do with this um but you know stay so stay tuned for that um tell us where you guys are from i'd love to hear that i'd like to see that in the chat and also on the comment section um also tonight after the show we are doing a q and a where you can ask questions and or make comments and the link to that's in the description so right after that you click on that link and it'll take you over to breaking babylon channel make sure you subscribe to that a lot of you guys already have we we're thankful for that um, but we're going to do that over there. So with that being said, John, what else we got? What's uh, Shavuot? We got the Pentecost celebration coming up at the barn next Sunday, which is the 5th of June. And a lot of you guys are coming to that. So we're excited to see you guys, man. This is going to be cool. It's going to be a busy week here at, at the Puritan barn. Looking forward to Shavuot and Pentecost and just glorifying the father. Uh, with a group of people who are, who are sold out to Jesus Christ. That's a lot of fun. Uh, don't forget, you guys mentioned last night, the Midnight Ride is going to be a marathon this weekend. So you're going to see a little changes, but you know we're gearing ourselves and getting ready to celebrate this here at the barn. So looking forward to that uh, and looking forward to the discussion tonight because you've seen the, the news articles coming out of Davos and the WHO and the UN. Uh, it's getting a little, little getting hairy out there. But again, you guys have seen that pressure come down on us. Uh, I, I want to do a quote that came out of the New York Times uh, just not too long ago, and it's from the CEO of BlackRock, and he's at the World Economic Forum. He said this, behaviors are going to have to change, and this is one thing we're asking companies, and you have to force behaviors, and BlackRock, he says, we are forcing those behaviors. You know the investments that they have, but the economic woes that we're seeing and the psychological warfare that's been uh, propagated against the American people, not just to us, but many other countries. Uh, the pressure's gotten that much harder on folks who are not grounded in Christ, and they're being tossed to and fro right now. And you can see the anger and hatred out there. Well, the fact that, that BlackRock's saying that, BlackRock, as many people know, some of you don't know, but uh, they are large, largest shareholders of all of almost all the major uh, pharmaceutical companies, corporations in general. They They control a lot of the stock. So what they say goes, you know, when you control a lot of the stock, you actually get to make policy for a company that you're involved in. Mm -hmm. So when they say that they're making the changes and they're going to make them happen in the companies that they run, that means almost every single company that is um, 
a, a big company, they have a dominant control in it. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And so that's that's kind of crazy to hear. You know, uh, if you really look into BlackRock and you see how um, how much they control, it really is kind of like you look at that and think, wow, how can this get any more bleak for right. what's coming? And then you see what's coming out of the WEF and you see what's coming out of Davos. And when you see what's coming out of all of these different uh, locations, you know, even giving control, the the talk of giving control over to um, the the uh, the who, right? The mm-hmm. WHO talk about giving control, sovereignty of all countries to them in the wake of a next pandemic. So, you know, it's it's pretty un- unreal. You know, the statement they said that we you know we're going to have to control that just shows you that people aren't willing. And, right. and you know, why would they? think that it's okay for them to control the organizations i don't know but it's crazy and it's it, you know in in the whole scheme of things it's it is um it is frightening when you think about it what's crazy about it is uh you guys are very aware and awake to what's happening in devos what's happening with the who and the un w- what we're dealing with on the ground are are folks who are being impacted by this whether by fear by anxiety whether going to the store and these these uh tragedies that are happening around the country as far as people being shot uh it's happening every day in chicago however we're dealing with this as their pressure these these world uh leaders going back to their respected countries and starting these policies and procedures these mandates or tyranny whatever you want to call them and then it begins to trickle down and put the pressure on people and for folks like us who follow Christ and who are preparing our lives the best we can, whether God takes our lives or he uses us in that prepping, uh, you know, we have to deal with the outside world and also reach them with the gospel. And there's a heightened anxiety, you know, when people go to the gas station and see four forty eight, five dollars, six dollars. And it's from that and and buying the infamil that's gone up, you know, twenty, thirty dollars because there's none. Well, this is all coming from the top down, guys. And these world leaders have all these corporations in their BlackRock is one of Vanguard's another one. And they have their tentacles and they're going to do what they're told. And we're seeing processing plants, John, go up in flames with no explanation whatsoever. Just out of the blue. Oh, it was a faulty wire. It was a light bulb. How many of them, how many light bulbs, you know, in the year 2022 is going to go out and cause a massive fire and cause processing plants to go down. I know there was a pork plant that just went down and they're saying, you know, they're recalling all, even though we don't do pork, but this is what's happening. And when people run into it, they don't know where to turn. They don't know how to act. And the morals have been completely snuffed out of them. The last two years, you do what you're told and you'll be happy. You'll be safe. You'll be safeguarded because we know better than you. Yeah, I mean they that's that that's kind of the theme. They they just know so much more than us. So they got to they got to do this for our own good. I heard him even equate it to a mother and her child, you know, the if as long as the mother knows more, it's okay for them to know more about the subject and you know, it's just it's it's this idea that we just are stupid and we don't know what we need. We're like cattle to them and we've always been that way in in a way because we've been controlled and there's always been controlled opposition. That's something that a lot of people probably don't understand about this because the way they're talking is this stuff's coming no matter what. Like mm. it's going to come whether you like it or not. It's just about who's going to control it. Who's right. going to who's going to control this hackable uh, human? And we we all know no matter how good the person the 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 statement that was made and I can't remember who makes the statement, but absolute power corrupts absolutely. absolutely. And I believe that that's 100% true because if you, if, and look, the way they're talking is they even know your emotion. So imagine that in the context of the worship of the beast, right? Uh. They, they can know if you're truly worshiping the beast or if you're just, you know, whatever. They, they know it down to your emotion behind the leader you're listening to. I mean, that, that is, is crazy, man. I mean, you know, so not only are you not allowed to have free speech, which was, you know, one of the core things of the Constitution. Mm. But now your feelings, either you have to figure out a way to hack your own feelings to mask them, or they're going to figure out a way to hack your feelings to mask them. It's, it's um, it, the, the progression that we've seen in the last few years has been phenomenal. Let's put it that way. 
and they're not hiding this. When you go to the World Economic Forum website, you can watch their little meetings. They're not going to show you all the back doors, but what they are telling us is out in the open. Pfizer's CEO came out uh, a week or so ago at DevOps saying we're going to be able to take a pill within the next two or three years that has a chip in it. And you go, you know, <laughs> you want to tell your friends, didn't I tell you so? Didn't I tell you so? It's the fact that they're openly telling us what they're doing and the masses are just rolling over because of the last two years. This, well, actually it's been the decade. Uh, and you can take it back to the thirties when they started the junk stuff. That was uh, Klaus Schwab's dad. And then Klaus started hanging out with Harry Kissinger and it's been trickling down ever since. Uh, you can't make this stuff up. However, being a believer in the way of Jesus Christ, you guys were talking about it last night. You know, it's the crunch is coming and these people are not going to stop. They're not going to stop their crazy, insane uh, policies and procedures on the respected countries who are rolling over to this. And so what do you do? And as soon as you guys started talking about prepping last night, there was a almost a, an upheaval. Like, we're not supposed to prep. Jesus is going to take care of us. You've heard this stuff before. But it, people are so divided over everything right now. They're, and the one thing Christ doesn't want us divided over is his word. Because it doesn't change, like you guys were saying last night. Uh, there was another comment that he made, uh, uh, Fink, the CEO of BlackRock. He said this, every company... Every industry will be transformed, and we have seen that, no doubt, by the transition to net zero. Here's this climate change stuff. And the question is, he's telling the, the, the world powers that be that are attending these meetings, you will lead or you will be led, meaning you'll either poop or get off the pot. And they're, they're in control right now, and they know it. And they are pushing their agenda a thousand percent right now. Yeah. And you, you, you know, you talked about talking about prepping and, and all of that. So, you know, in America, especially in America, there's been this sense of almost lunacy for people that, that prep, right? They even made a show about it, found the craziest people they could find to put on the show <laughs> so that it looks like preppers are crazy. But, you know, the problem, I think the mo the biggest problem about all of this is they're not actually prepping. They're just living how normal people would have lived. Um, hundred years ago, you know, I mean, the people, what people don't understand is that this Babylonian mindset that we have of, you can just go run to the grocery store, grab anything you want. Anytime you want to get it, you can go into McDonald's, grab you a dollar cheeseburger or whatever. That stuff didn't exist, uh, over a hundred years ago, right? Yeah, there was, no. there was, you had to literally prepare or you would starve in the winter time. Yeah. You had to prepare. You would even starve in the summertime because if you didn't do what you're supposed to do, and prepare properly, you would starve to death. Uh, but we've gotten away from that, and so people think it's weird to to do the things that we're supposed to do as humans, uh, because they've gotten so accustomed to Babylon's delicacies, the king's meat. They've been choking down the king's meat and drinking the king's wine and spending the king's Illuminati dollars on it, right? Just going everywhere and thinking that this is going to last forever. But this isn't going to last forever. Uh, we see the signs. Mm -hmm. uh, David equated it last night. He did a great job. The idea is like they're going on the news saying, hey, there's a hurricane coming for sure. Uh, <laughs> evacuate. And yeah. then saying, no, I'm not going to evacuate. Um, you know, I just don't don't see the need to evacuate. It's the same kind of thing. We, it, there is there's a call and a need for all of us to get back to the ancient way, the, the old ways, right? Because the old ways are the only sustainable ways. Yet you see these these companies wanting to go to net zero to where basically we're having zero carbon emissions or zero whatever. I don't even know. Even though we're mostly carbon, like we're literally water and carbon. That's it. Um, so it's crazy to me to see see what's going on. But at the same time, you we have to get back to that way because if we get back to that way, they can't control us. If everybody was got back to that way to where they didn't, we don't need their products, we don't need their stores, we don't need their all of that, then it would go away. And they know that. That's mm -hmm. why they've demonized prepping, made you think that all, only crazy people prep, and made you think that you know you need big daddy government for your health care, you need big daddy government for your social security checks, you need big daddy government for uh, your protection, you need all of these things, not realizing that we as individual humans have this already as part of who we are we we've been given the ability to protect ourselves we've been given the an immune system we've been given all of these things that 
magnify our abilities, but yet we've been told that we don't know what we're talking about. We've been told that we're not capable of defending ourselves. We're, we've been told we're not allowed to have weapons to be, you know, to defend ourselves. I mean, it's just, it's just unreal the amount of pressure that has been put down on men and women of this country and to the point to where they're no longer real men and no longer real women. It, we're, we're a shell of what we used to be. Well, did you see where the military just came out recently and are going to allow their uh, military men and women to pick and choose what military base is, depending on their abortion laws, uh, you know, their uh, LGBTQ laws? I mean, this is getting ridiculous. Guys, he's right. You know, money, travel, health, education, privacy, and security, and they're trying to reduce us down to a, a digital bits of storage data. And they want to make it, and it's the Great Reset. Uh, you guys have seen so many videos on the Great Reset. John and David have talked about it extensively, done so much research, even from a historical, biblical context. However, you know, sometimes it goes one ear, not the other. People just need to start standing up and having, you know, that critical thinking again, because that's exactly what they're trying to take from us. And they're trying to take it from your families and they're trying to take it from you. The thing is, is you're starting to kick back. You're starting to wake up. There's many people who are. And, you know, they're going to have to deal with folks who are pinned down from thinking that, you know, dot government is going to come down on them. It's worse than what the father will. And they need that that vessel of light from Jesus shining out of you guys. No, it's no joke. You know, everything we do, they're trying to press it down to a digital storage data or some kind of bit and and track us. Well, that doesn't jive well with Scripture and it doesn't jive well with you guys. But we have to deal with the outside world uh, who is being tossed to and fro from this. And we got to be prepared for that. Mm -hmm. We do. Yeah. And, you know, of course, part of that is going to be um, being in prayer and knowing kind of who you are inside of inside of this body that we have because what people i think fail to remember in all in all in life in general is that you know we have two separate parts of us you know so body body soul and spirit right we have these these separate separate entities within inside of us and the the scripture talks about how jesus divides the soul and the spirit and how that takes place the holy spirit divides that when we when we become a believer and the inner part of us is free right we're free to be able to think the way we want to think we're free to be able to believe what we want to believe um but they're trying to enslave the outside of us and and, and even the inside at this point with with whatever technologies they want to impose upon us and and what people i don't think realize is that they may have no intention of saving any of us. I think mm -hmm. that, you know, if you guys haven't seen this, go check it out. But the elite have these bunkers underground where they've got food for 100 years and yeah, inside these things with pools set up, transportation from one bunker to another. I mean, they've got it set up like posh, right? They've got it set up looking better than our house, right? Better than probably better than their, their house they live in right now. That's how nice they have it set up. So they have every intention of going underground because they know um, deep down, they know that they're going to face some kind of cataclysm. Mm -hmm. And this cataclysm, we know in the scripture, is going to be the return of the Messiah when he comes in all of his glory and shines so bright that they wow. can't even stand in his presence. And so they're going to entomb themselves underground. And so a lot of this stuff they're doing is to not just to uh, help humanity come along, which is what some of these people may have the intentions of, of doing because they don't believe in God, so they believe they're helping create human 2.0. But a lot the people that actually know, or the entities, I should put it that way, that know what's going on, they are here to kill, steal, mm -hmm. and destroy. And so humanity is at risk of being destroyed, which we know in Scripture that that was going to happen, that a lot of people, over a third of the population is going to be destroyed. And then even more than that, after this wave of violence and wave of disease and everything like that comes through, and so their their goal is not to save you, right? Their goal is to be kings and to be uh, in be the ones that continue on to the next age, right? That's their goal. And um, when we can keep that in mind and realize that, like, it's not about our body saving our body; it's about saving our spirit. Mm -hmm. Because when what happens is you get people get so wrapped up in 
uh, what is the medical system going to do for me? Um, I, I need this medical system. I need them in order to live. I can't get food without it. But that shows a strong desire to only be in tune with your flesh. Because, yes, your flesh doesn't want to die. Your flesh wants to keep living no matter what. It'll do anything to save itself. But your spirit knows that when you die, you're not actually dead. It knows that your spirit lives, lives and continues on. So that's why the Bible always talks about living by the spirit versus living by the flesh and the fruits that come of both of those things. And so we have to be we have to really be living in the spirit in these times because our flesh is going to want to do anything it can to sustain itself if we're living in that flesh and we're strengthening our flesh rather than strengthening who we are inside. Well, I, it goes back to what the World Economic Forum, it's one of their mantras. It says, own nothing and have no privacy and life has never been better. That's that's what they want the masses to say, but we can't. There's no way. There's no compromise, as David said, you know, this past weekend on him. There's no compromise. And what are they trying to compromise? The bottom line is they want people to sin. What sin is, as John laid it out last night, First John 3, 4, that is that is the end goal, to separate us from the living God. And this is the goal of the World Economic Forum. Now, whether they are conscious of it or whether they are in cahoots with whatever demonic entities that are pushing this stuff, uh, that's what they're doing. And the transhumanism, uh, you know, people have been talking this the last 20 years, the last 40 years. And here it is. We're seeing it in real time. We've got AI, quantum physics. All of this is happening to do what? to corrupt us, to corrupt us before the Father. And when you stick out like a sore thumb, and you will because of your stance and the foundation of which you've placed your life, uh, you got to be ready for it. And the only way to be ready for it is to be doing what the Father has you doing right now, being in His Word and living it out. And I just did a, a Klingon, John. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just did a Klingon. I just did a Klingon. So, <laughs> I, like, you know, we, last night they talked about or David talked about the noisome beasts mm -hmm. and all of these different things, these these things that are judgments upon the land. And I was just reading, like in some states, they're trying to outlaw hunting. Uh -huh. And being able to keep populations down is always important. All of these laws that they're passing, have they have real consequences that aren't um, ne good consequences. Like just because they may, it may seem good, oh, nobody's going to kill animals anymore. The problem is that these things overpopulate and people die because of it. I mean, like here in Indiana, you can't hardly drive down the road without seeing a deer. If those deer populations weren't cold, you'd have wrecks every day. People every be smacking day in this deer. state, every day, every day, every. I mean, I've hit a deer this year. My wife's hit a deer this year. Everybody hits the deers around here. That's just a common thing. It's like not not if you're going to hit a deer, or when you're going to hit a deer, right? <laughs> so, but like think about that. All of these uh, all of these animals that aren't being cold and bears that aren't being cold and all of these different things all because of these policies that are going to destroy uh in, in the end. I believe they are. And of course, look, this is all our opinion. Of course, you know, we can't we can't say that it, we know everything and we can't pretend like we understand all about human biology and all of those different things. These are our opinions, but we're we're biblically basing our opinions about how we as humans, we as people that have a sovereign uh, spirit and we li we belong to a sovereign kingdom of God, um, we don't we don't look to these new improvements as a good thing. We look to them as a very mm -hmm. um, horrifying thing that could destroy humans uh, at the core of who they are. You mentioned. Uh... There, the recent uh, incident in, in Texas, and it's, you know, the, the mainstream news has picked up, but I think they waited like 45 minutes. A lot of decisions made by the administration that just doesn't, defies logic. And a lot of decisions made by leadership from the top down defy logic. Uh, and people buying it and falling into it. More, more interested in the latest thing streaming on Disney Plus than they are what's going on in their own communities or what's going on in their, in their local uh, officials or even state or federal. They could care less as long as it doesn't uh, interrupt their day or whatever they're doing, playing games. I don't know, but what has been zapped out of the American people. And I'm just speaking for us right now uh, is this total control from the top down and, and the folks who have bought into it. 
and you see the flags of a European country over there and wanting support for them. You're seeing illogical uh, decisions made by administrations supporting other countries other than small businesses. And the people are like, whatever. You got moms running into the crowd, John, down there in Texas, being maced and arrested. Who's making these decisions and where did that come from? But this is what, you know, they're getting the masses used to so they can come in and fix it and make it all better and make us all under one control. But all these things are happening. That was tragic. Did you see some of those videos of moms trying to run to save their children? But where are these decisions coming from? And we've, we've been seeing these absolutely mm -hmm. foolish decisions across the board for months, 24 months, John, we've been printing $5 trillion, five trillion. Who does that? You, none of you guys, I've said this many times would run your household like that. You don't, uh, you stay within the lines because of who you are in Christ and the, the, the rules you follow. They want you to follow man's rules. That is the simple. And that's what gets us corrupted, whether it's transhumanism or whether it's the decision you make to tie them to something that is evil. Uh, this world is set up to do that. And that's why it's so serious to talk about these subjects like we do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, th I think like when you, when you put it in a way that I guess out of the context of this year, like, you know, you, you posted a video on the cutting edge of, and it's a clip from Paul Harvey. Yeah. Um, if I, if I were the devil is the, is the name of the video. And, when you went through the video, you put examples of everything that this guy was saying has already happened. It's starting to happen right now. 1963. And, and in today's age, in 2022, to say, to see these things happen, it's almost become to a point now to where it doesn't, almost doesn't phase us as much as it would have if had we heard this 10 years ago. Right. If 10 years ago, this talk was going on and, and Dr. Evil was there speaking about taking over the world and wanting to hack the human program, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? If he was, that happened 10 years ago, like, I think they would have already raided his office and he would been in prison, right? You yeah. know, like, cause he, nobody elected the guy and, and, but yet they're trying to control the entire world. But you know, the, in the context of this year, a lot has happened. You can see that the veil of protection mm -hmm. against the world might be might be lifted at this point you know what i mean it might be to a point to where that veil they feel that that veil is gone enough that they can move forward and why you know without any repercussions without any repercussions well the white house was asked this morning if they were going to investigate what happened in texas and this is what, what my surprise was no there's going to be no investigation but these types of decisions have been louder and louder and louder over the last two years and it's going to get a lot louder because like you said that and i'm in agreement with you the veal has been removed that protection uh we've gone too far uh they were maccabees is one of those stories i know it's one of your favorite ones where they were causing women to throw babies off the walls right to jump to their deaths and, you know, whether it's to that extreme or not, you know, moms are sitting on the tarmac looking for infamil so they can feed their babies. And then you got the right and left fighting over it. The bottom line, right, people are suffering. And that is what this is to cause. The more people suffer, the more bad choices they make and un ungodly choices. They, they veer off and worry about the fear that's in front of them than what the father has them doing. And these conversations, it's it's already at our back door in our own towns and we've got to deal with it every day when you go to the gas station you got to watch your back uh when you park your car out in the driveway you don't know who's with the gas prices go up i mean people do whatever it takes to keep their lives going just the way it was uh before all this started and they will lie they will cheat they will stab you in the back and christians in the last couple of decades in these sugar-coated churches have been lulled to think it's all inclusive everybody's this oh it's all good hunky dory that is not that is not the father's word he's very exclusive with his relationship and how he wants it to go and he states it very clearly 
in the Bible how he wants us to worship him and how we're to walk this out. And yet you got churches teaching people just to accept and include everybody when that, those bad apples enter and the ones that are absolutely out of their mind because of they've been caught up in, in the fray of the World Economic Forum and what's going on in the world. Uh, you got to it's time to stand up. It's time to to man up, to woman up. And, and make your boundaries as loud and clear, but also loving and compassionate as you possibly can. The world's going to get a little bit more bleaker. They are loud and clear what they're wanting to do in this agenda, whether it's 2030 or whether it's this tomorrow. Uh, they're going full steam ahead. Whether we, what we think about it, or, they, know we th we, they know we know, and they don't care right now. They just don't. Well, they don't care because they don't have any opposition. That's why, you know, so... Here, here's the thing. It's like you, you, we Americans think that they have, that we have a ace in the hole with with President Trump coming along. Now, <laughs> and and look, like we said before, this technology, this wave of control is coming, whether we like it or not, and whoever's in control of it doesn't mean that it just because you like the way somebody talks or whatever doesn't mean it's going to be a good thing if they're in control of mm -hmm. what's going on um this is this is one of those things as to where i don't think there's any i don't think that there's any coming back from as far as we've come along you know the one of the reasons that god separated babylon is because they all came together and he said that anything would be possible for them if they're allowed to continue so he separated their languages and split them off now we're coming to a point now to where that is happening again, where the whole world is going to unite underneath one banner. Mm -hmm. um, technology now, you can talk to somebody from Russia and hear it in your own language via internet, right? Yep. Via, via the computer, via s different software that you have. All types of people can collaborate on blockchains to build this big network of minds, almost like a hive mind uh, to, to work together. And if, and if humans are truly hackable, like they're saying, and they're going to try to hack them, then who knows what kind of operations they're going to put inside of these humans. So we're at a point right now to where technology is our is is our biggest uh, enemy. And of course, that is just a smokescreen for the takeover of Satan, right? The technology is a the way that Satan can be as God in the temple, right? And I, And I know a lot of people believe that Satan's going to sit in a physical temple inside Jerusalem, which he may. But I think that the the scriptures tells us that our body's the temple, mm -hmm. and so if he can house himself in the, our temple, in the temple of our mind, then he can be as God. And so that's he needs technology to do that. He needs to be able to manipulate the seed, manipulate the DNA. He needs to be able to do that. And Daniel, it it talks about there's the statue that Nebuchadnezzar saw. And you get down to the feet, each each part of the body, each part of the different metals and stones represent a era, right? Or the top being Nebuchadnezzar's reign of the gold head. And then at the bottom, we have this reign to where you have two different, uh, you have miry clay mm -hmm. and iron. And in the miry clay, it says that they will try to mix their seed with the seed of man, but it will not cleave. And so they're going to try to be able to hack humans by entering in and can and that's what satan wants he wants to be known as god even if he has to destroy all of creation just to be known as god to a few people that's what he wants and that's what he's going for and so even if we do have a good president come up which i'm not i'm not gonna look i i i when i listen to president trump i hear a guy that knows what to say he knows how to how to get people motivated towards doing um voting for him how to how to pull the right strings for people that that want to hear it you know we're gonna we're gonna mm -hmm. we're gonna shut down the borders we're going to make america great again all of these things that people want of course he's going to portray that in one way or another and all i'm saying is this be very wary mm -hmm. of people that talk and don't have the holy spirit as far as like the fruits of the spirit going on in their lives that's all i'm going to say i don't know hopefully Hopefully there's another chance, right? But I'm not, I'm not putting my dice on that. Well, I, I, you know, I'll give my two cents and I'll be mm -hmm. as, as, as YouTube friendly as possible. Right before he left office, uh, you know, and you can think what you want. Uh, all of this, uh, the, 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 the mandates, all of the, from the pandemic, 
uh, was signed into the Emergency Authorization Act, and he did it for our safety. He knew full well what he was doing. He knew what was happening. He had Fauci in his back pocket. They were all there. Even though they're hacking at each other, he still did it. And now we have been dealing with it. And now it's gotten bigger. It's almost like a cancer. Farmlands are being bought up by billionaires. And it's turned into modification uh, food. Uh, most of the pharmaceuticals are, are gearing their their pharmaceuticals towards the new genetic biotech that we've been dealing with the last two years. Uh, uh, here's an example, John, uh, just a small example of what you just said. Uh, in Trump's years, we were dealing with a $1.89, $1.96 gallon of gas. Remember that, guys? And now you see all the pumps going up to $7. We, we're, we're all getting hit by it. But the vast contrast of leadership and how they get the, 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 the masses softened is – Man, they give us this, and now we, we've got a, a maybe a horizon. Trump is going to get back in, and our gas is going to go down, and the economy is going to go up. And that's how people think politically. But at the end, they're still pushing the same agenda. That whole, because you're, we're going to keep you safe and sign these mandatory that are not laws and, and force people to do it, whether it's him or somebody else, uh, they're still doing it. It's the two left and right-hand path. Mm. But again... I'm like you. He he talks well. He's entertaining. As a matter of fact, Joe Biden's entertaining. If you and embarrassing at the same time. However, this is their their function is to move that agenda. They're all at the World Economic Forum. There are eight Republicans, eight Republicans at that World Economic Forum. Why are they there? Why why is the back pocket of Klaus Schwab? just inundated with world powers and corporate and academia is to control. And, and we're talking about, we have to live in a world where people are being controlled by them. And we have to be aware of that and astute to it. It's, it's an amazing time to be alive and, and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is, it's an amazing time. Yeah. I mean, the time in the, and I think that one thing that, really like really is stands out to me about the time we're in right now too is just the amount of brainwashing and psychological warfare that's been taken uh, up on people and how easily easily it's working and i you know i feel like something has definitely caused a lot of post traumatic stress in people right now like people are right. literally like hanging on the on the doorpost of anything that's being said by the government and you know how do you address all of this brainwashing how do you address all of this manipulation that's been going on and how do, how do you break through into people's minds to to break them of that and i think that we all need to figure out a ways that we can do such a, do such a thing all of us are kind of in a in a point in that right now to where we're supposed to be working as one body mm -hmm. and the question is always what can we do and you know one of the, like and i'd like to talk about that a little bit what can a normal person do you know um what do you do you have any suggestions for just a normal person how they can how they can at least make an impact on somebody right now and and i'm not going to tell you anything different if you're not starting with christ jesus and walking with him you're not going to be able to help anybody you'll you'll go down the same toilet as everybody else but when you start off your foot with Messiah, Christ, and you take his words literally and live by every word and walk it out and practice it, you're going to change lives. As soon as you get up, you, you are a ministry and you go to the store, you go to the grocery store. But if you don't start there, uh, you know, your prepping's not, it, the fruit is going to stink. Uh, to be used of God is to be walking with him. So that's where I would start right yeah. off the bat. Yeah. What else would we be doing? Well, I mean, I think that too, like, you know, there's, so Facebook, it obviously for a lot of people, it's, it's a mute point. There's no way you're going to be able to break through people's boundaries on there. Cause it's so controlled by oh. these people that are just paid to hit buttons and do whatever. And they're, most of the people are Silicon Valley people. So obviously anything that's of moral, um, has moral volume to it or moral absolute absolutes to it they're going to get rid of and so facebook's no longer a great option instagram is no longer a great option you can get by with some things on on there but Not overall much. overall you're gonna you're you know you'll be getting jail time you know 
at least Instagram gel time, Facebook gel time uh, by doing it. And so you have these blocks in being able to get information out. I think that, um, I, I, you know, I've always, I wanted to host this in the past, but the for people to have a way to print out newsletters that look very professional, that they could hang on people's doors or send them out as that. mailers would be a good option. That's what people used to do before there was the news or before there was uh, media, social media, before all that. Sometimes going back to those old guerrilla style warfare yeah. ways we is actually to. pretty powerful. And that would be cool. That would be neat. And if somebody, if anybody, you know, that's one way I can think of that might help as well. Well, I do know that God, you know, in these times, he raises people up, the remnant up and uh, brings us together. And that's what he's doing right now. He's waking a whole bunch of people up and we are getting uh, we're getting in intuitive and we're getting uh, ingenuitive in how we communicate. You guys, you know, have learned the the etiquette on the, the Zuckerberg book and and TikTok and all these. And you see how they're using them. But uh, we. We still communicate, and the the groups that we circle in, uh, we're uh, over on Now You See TV Fellowship. There are places, right, where we can talk. Still, maybe that they they still watch us, but uh, yeah, guerrilla warfare as far as you know, getting the gospel out, printing things up, uh, holding fellowships at your house. Uh, these are very very important things, especially in these end days. Communication between the brethren uh, will be important, and having that form of communication. Yeah, and I think that we, you know, at least our audience here. This is like me speaking to you guys as, as because the whole point of the whole point of this show is to help us break out of the mentality of, of Babylon, right? The mentality of climbing up together in a big city and everybody working towards the same exact goal, led by a, a despot for a leader. Um, that's that's the opposite of what we do. So you know, I I want to encourage all of you guys to do something something that you're not you do haven't done before yeah that you uh feel like god's leading you to do to help do it don't don't hesitate don't think well i'm just uh, i'm just a you know an accountant i can't do this or i'm just a i'm just a lawyer i can't do this you can do this you can you can do a lot believe it or not especially if you're in a position of any kind of power you can make a stand take a stand in that area and do something and whether it be just printing off flyers and handing them out or whether it be, um, you know, teaching, uh, volunteering to teach a kid's class, volunteer, whatever, like something, I'm going to encourage each and every one of us to take a step towards doing something outside of the box of what you would normally do, um, in helping people and helping break the control that's happening. I would encourage each and every one of you to do that. And I think that if, if the churches in general had encouraged this for the last hundred years, we wouldn't be in the place we're at right now. So I encourage you to do that. Take positions of of authority in your area if you can. You know, whether it be the school board, whether it be a local city council, take positions of authority everywhere you can go and and exercise that authority. Mm -hmm. Don't be scared to be politically incorrect. Do uh, do whatever it is you can do and go out and really try to make a difference. Stop, you know, just relying on um whatever it is, you know, your job that you're relying on only because that the job is a way to make money. But we also have another responsibility to serve the kingdom and to build mm -hmm. the kingdom. And not everybody's going to be able to do it, the same thing, but you can all do something. All of you are going to be able to be influential in some way, shape or form. Uh, so I want to encourage each and every one of you to to do that, to try to do that, because the only way um, we're going to become in a position to where we have any kind of uh, chance at any of this is if we can better ourselves personally, which m includes gaining wisdom, which I've done a whole show on wisdom, the difference yep. between regular wisdom you get from God and the wisdom you get from situations and from learning about things. But for all of us to grow in wisdom, to grow in power, and all of these things in might, all in the name of Jesus, um, that would be a huge step. Can you imagine thousands of us <laughs> all walking in that authority? It would change things. It yeah, really it would. would change things. And so I want to encourage that. That's one of my main goals in all of this is to encourage you guys to do more, encourage you to get stronger, encourage you to um, you know, work out, encourage you to gain self-defense skills, encourage you to gain other skills, welding skills, whatever skills it is that you feel like you want to learn, 
do it. It's going to come in handy one day. In Romans 12, 17, it says this, Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. All men are not going to like what you're doing. All men are will complain about what you're doing. But as long as you're not, you know, evil for evil and you're providing honesty and the way the only way you can do that is to follow Christ in your life and to live according to his commandments. Uh, whatever you do, he will bless it. He will use it. And that's what we're called to do, John, is to throw our crowns before him, to give him glory. And we're encouraging you guys to do that, to live a full life under the banner of Christ Jesus. And this is not cliche, but you can find out about him. While the while the Bible has not been stripped yet, and they're they're leaning, they're going wholeheartedly with every translation under the sun, trying to de defile the word. Get in it, learn it, and walk it out so that when you do things, just like Joseph, just like Abraham, just like the, the prophets of old, and those men and women who have inspired you that have walked this out, uh be ready at the ready for it because we're living in some interesting times while all kinds of things are going off around us now's the time to be used of god and be ready to be used of him yes and i'm not you know god's not calling you to sit around in your tuchus i guarantee you that <laughs> i guarantee you he's not calling you to sit around your tuchus guaranteed and so you know me and john are just normal normal humans like yeah. you, the rest of you guys you know we're nothing special you know, God's given us a platform to, in order to relay, relay a message. It's not a popular message. Mm -mm. You know, we could be we could be relaying all kinds of crazy messages. We're actually, you know, if you really think about it, we're treated as the scum of society by social media, by YouTube, all of that. You know, people that dress like, um, you know, whatever. You know, we don't even know what uh, gender they are. We'll say gender they're, fluid. They're, fluid. They're, they call it gender fluid. Well, these they're days. they're more highly thought of than we are. <laughs> so, like, you know, this is this is, uh, but at the same time, we have to um, be humble enough to be led, and humble enough to know that our way isn't always the right way. No, and that's that's I think really uh, the whole key behind all of this now if you if you're listening tonight you think these guys are nuts you know fine you can think that all you want it really doesn't matter we're used to that it, it we're, we're yeah we're fine with that we're used to it and it doesn't bother us but i can tell you this that if you hear what we're saying i can promise you that there's never a time when somebody telling you to better yourself and do more for the kingdom is a bad thing if if people um people think that's a bad thing to hear then they're listening to the wrong spirit um, no matter who it's from. I will say the 20 years I spent in nursing in the critical care areas, I have been challenged more serving in, in the ministry and under the banner uh, than I've ever been challenged. And it's been inwardly. God, and you, men, you mentioned this, God in his word sets up corporate, corporate ecclesia. We can read about it. We can understand how we function in it, but it's that relationship. And, you know, he doesn't speak to you like he does me. He knows you intimately. He knows you intimately. He's going to speak to you. But, you know, testing the spirits right now and having somebody literally say something like that, you know, oh, you know, God was, did you test the spirit? Did you go to his word and 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 put it to scrutiny and make sure it's from him? Uh, right now, we live in a society where fantasy and sci-fi and the MCU is often going and you've got Disney and it's just constant and it's softening our minds and our hearts away from the father. And, and like John said, when it's all stripped, people are going to be caught with their pants down and not have a foundation from which to work from, to be able to go to your neighbors and, and see and check on them or, you know, whatever it is God's calling you to do in your community. These people, uh, that they've been meeting every year for, for decades now, have been planning this over time. And now a lot of people are just now waking up to it. And it's, uh -uh. it's this has been going on for quite some time, but there's no need to be shaken by it. No need to have fear over it. No need to give it anxiety or that much time. Now's the time to focus on God. Now's the time to focus on God in your life, your family's life, and what he has you doing. Hmm. I, I like that. I think that that's, that's such a good advice for people because it's easy to get caught up in everything going on. And, you know, I think that, uh, you know, as a group, if we, we all have the kind of same 
prayer and same mind towards towards doing the will of God, this is gonna this is gonna matter. It's gonna it's not we're gonna see a huge difference in uh, just out of this Breaking Babylon crew. Mm-hmm. Just out of the people that are listening to Breaking Babylon tonight. If all of you make direct efforts and prayers towards um, making your area of influence better, Amen. Then we're gonna see a difference, at least in our own lives, right? If nothing else, in our families' lives and the people around us' lives. And so, um, with that being said, guys, make sure you guys go over and subscribe to Breaking Babylon. We're going to be doing a Q&A over there in the next 30 minutes. So make sure you guys come. You can ask any questions, make any comments you want, and we will read them and talk to you guys for a little while. So make sure to go over there and check it out. I've got one request, guys. If you would share this show out on your Facebook pages, your Instagrams, or wherever, it would help Now You See TV overcome the AI algorithms. It's not cliche. We're figuring this stuff out as we go. But if you guys help us out with that, we would appreciate that very much. And we'll see you over on the q and I'm looking forward to that. We'll we're doing a Q&A on the Breaking Babylon. We're doing Babylon. a Q&A on the Breaking Babylon. Make <laughs> sure you subscribe to their channel, too, because eventually we're actually going to do our breaking babylons over there and we'll play reruns over Over here here. yeah so make sure you guys actually subscribe to that if you like what we're doing and if you like tonight if you liked what you heard or if you wanted to hear more hit the subscribe button please do do it do it right now what do you and um i'll tell you what man tonight we're gonna do the pounders pound here on breaking babylon are you kidding me i'm not kidding you so right now we're oh my goodness 273 likes oh let me so we're gonna we're gonna ready to do the pounders pound pick up your coffee man you don't (laughs) uh you you don't even have to do the pounds of other they're gonna do it this is the very first time i'm doing you're gonna do so loud they don't we don't even have to hit the hit the pound key over here they're gonna pound it so loud that it's gonna cause an explosion and a rain down of likes. So we're fantastic. gonna do this on the count of three. Here we go. One, One two, two, three, three. Boom. Oh, boom. it didn't work, John. It didn't work. Not enough people hit the like button, so we're gonna have to do it one more time. Oh, come on, guys. One, two, three. three. Boom. There we go. That that was it. Man, that I was got it. goosebumps. I, that was <laughs> it. Look at all those likes. Just, I'm loving it. Just Thank likes you guys. likes flowing. Thank you so much. Thank you guys a lot. We're gonna see you guys here soon. Check out the QA. We love you guys. Until next time, be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed.